Hello, it's Anna Belch here, also known as AB Animation Limited, with episode 4 of my Battle Wolves Motto View tutorial series. And, um, I've got my inventory pretty much filled up today because we're going to be crafting a lot of stuff. Um, because, um, I'm actually going to combine, um, part 4 and part 5 of the, uh, um, of the Bed of the Wolves Ages of Progression list. Um, the, the mods creator has actually, um, made almost like a guide uh, which divides the stages. So far I've done the first three stages. In this episode we're going to do stages 4 and 5. Um, this here, by the way, is um, the recipe book. Rizagami's recipe book mod. Um, it's compatible with Bed of the Wolves and it shows you not only all the vanilla recipes but also all the Bed of the Wolves recipes. So, um, you may also want to note um, if you've been watching the earlier episodes of the series that I've been um, quite busy. Um, I've built a storeroom over here and this down here is going to be the blacksmith. And in this episode we're going to be making um, various tools that will be used in this blacksmith. Now, um, I think I said this in the last episode, the first thing we need to make to get to stage 4, which is automation and basic alchemy, is the hopper. And I can just show you how to make the hopper right here. Um, you need the corner piece, which if you remember is made with um, the saw at the sawmill. Um, you'll need a gear on either side. Um, this, by the way, is a pressure plate, um, which you can craft in vanilla. I, I'm supposing not, not many people use them. Okay, no, that's wrong. Um, that's a hopper. A corner piece and a pressure plate like that, with um, two gears on either side. That's a hopper, and I'm going to place it down and show you what it does. Here's a hopper I put down earlier and it's receiving mechanical power from the um, auto wheel. What you do with a hopper is, well it collects various items that are on the ground so I'll show you if I put that there, toss that lever into it. I don't know, maybe it has to be received. I don't know, it doesn't. So, the lever is now in the hopper, it sucked it up off the ground. Now, um, it just excuse me while I go make an axe, because um, my old one, like everything else in my adventure, broke. Oh, and I have nothing to craft it with, I'm just. Um, sorry about this, but. Um, I think I'll probably need an axe of some description to uh, pick up that hopper. So I can destroy the hopper and I get the lever back. It's basically like a chest that sucks things up off the ground, but it hasn't got very much storage space. So what you could do is connect it to a chest. Like I'll use one here as an example. I can put a chest there and Anything I throw in, well, when it receives mechanical power, it ejects things out of here. So, if I throw something in, um, it, well, it doesn't suck it in because um, because it's got a filter. I'll just take it out to show you what I mean. But because it's receiving mechanical power, it ejects it instantly. Um, so, um, if I put a chest there, I can put anything I want in there and it will instantly go into the chest. Which makes the hopper very useful in mob traps. And what I'm actually going to do right now is... Put a hopper here in this mob trap. And I actually had one here earlier, but I needed it for something else. So now, in the mob trap, when things down under there, so things will get carried along and they'll end up being put in this hopper. And I can put a chest under it to increase the storage space if I wanted. 
Now hoppers can also have filters on them. Because if you notice, this top slot here can have various items in that will act as a filter. Um, um, for example, for Wicker, I think we made in episode 2, um, can be used as a filter. Um, you can use trapdoors as filters, you can also use ladders as filters. Um, you can also make this special grate filter. And each filter accepts certain items, so... Um, say if I had... Uh, this filter here on... It won't accept my sword, because it won't fit. However, if I throw in... Let's say some of this sawdust... Um, that gets accepted in and ejected out the bottom. So... That's what various filters do. You can also make, um... The inventory's gonna fill quickly here, so, uh... As I go through this episode, I'm going to have to put various parts in this chest. Um, I've labelled all my different chests. To make things a bit easier. If I had build crafting, I'd have pipes doing all this for me, but, um... You can get a mod that combines build craft and better wolves together it's called better than build craft but it's currently in 1.2.3 so it's incompatible right now with my version of minecraft so the second filter i'm going to show you how to make is for rollers or slats they, they are called rollers on the um on the forum thread for better wolves um if you put this in it will allow paper is substances through, like paper, um, and also any powder substances, but I'm not going to show you how to use it, I'm not really that interested in filters myself, it's just so that you could have like uh, a channel going over several hoppers, each one would have a separate filter, and you'd have like all the papery substances in one, and all the powdery substances in another, and all the large items in another, and it would organise everything that way. So it would organise all your mob traps, but fillers don't really have much of a use for me except for this soul sand filter, um, which is um, soul sand is obviously um, a rare substance that you can find in the Nether, and it can be used as a filter. What I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to pass some Nether rack, some ground Nether rack through that filter. But first of all, I need to show you how to make ground Nether rack. So let's head on over to the mill. Um, put a piece of Neverack in the mill. And as you can hear, it starts getting ground up and there's horrible noises. Um, I would imagine that the uh, souls in the Neverack are being forced from the mill. They aren't too happy about it. Um, so now we have this ground Neverack. Got crushed up and ready to be processed. Now we need to get the souls out of it to expose the um, virtual red stuff inside that's useful to us. Put it through the filter. Now we find a chest underneath it, go into the chest, but I don't, so it makes hellfire dust. Get rid of the souls, and you have this powdery substance that is very, very volatile. Um, uh, I could do quite a few things with um, this dust. First of all, I'm going to make something that's called carbon powder. Put some coal or charcoal into a millstone and it will grind it down and give you a fine um, black coal like substance. I have like coal dust from um, industry craft. Imagine the millstone is a bit like uh, an industry craft macerator. In fact. So, um, you can uh, combine hellfire dust with carbon powder to uh, make a special form of coal. Um, if I can remember how you do this. 
I don't think. Um, okay, I'll be I'll be back in a sec. Right, I'm back. I just realised you don't craft the the never coal, compound and health idols. You just put them in a sewing pot together. Um, just like that, Calm powder and health idols. Um, what this will make is something called never coal, which is like normal coal when it burns for longer, it's more efficient. So I would imagine it's um, probably about twice as long, might be longer, I don't know specifics. But you could use it just like coal and it is much more effective. So uh, I don't really need to use never coal right now. I'm just going to put it in this chest that I've already made some earlier. And now I'm going to show you what you can do for the rest of the Hellfire Dust. Oh yeah, I was going to say, you need quite a lot of Hellfire Dust. Like this. Um, the, this thing is concentrated Hellfire. Almost like a Hellfire Inger, what you need to do is put eight. Not, no, no. Eight Hellfire Dust in a stewing pot. It needs to be eight. Otherwise, it won't cook. Um, it will cook it all down. And you get um, basically this concentrated hellfire block, which is much more stable than hellfire dust. Um, and with this, we're going to make um, something else useful. Um, I'm just. Thinking, yeah, that's basically now we're at the end of stage four. That's all stage four was, uh, like making the hopper and grinding down some stuff, which is why I thought it would be a very long episode. So that's why I'm starting to do uh, the next stage as well, stage five, which is fire mastery. Three calls of chains and hellfire on the top, along with this here, filaments and some redstone make for hibachi. So we needed all that hellfire dust. Um, hibachi is actually a Japanese uh, word. I'm not sure what it actually means, but in short, what it will do is, when it receives the redstone currents, it will create fire. Um, oh wait, can I just pause a minute? All right, I'm back. Um, small interruption. Nothing to worry about. But um. Let's give this a batch of power and I'll show you what happens. There we go. So it's like never rack on top only, it could be turned on and off. Might have a sign there. Um, up is off, down is on. Um, now, this fire in itself is very useful to us, which is why we need to make the bellows is um, kind of a long process to make bellows because you need to make about four tanned leather um, I've got three but what you need four for is because you, you would use the last piece of tanned leather to make each leather um, strips and make a bell so basically it's three tanned leather and a bell Pardon me. Um, two gears. I'll get some signings on top. These are the bellows. And um, what you do with this is um, um, the bellows is quite complicated to set up. I've already got my system ready here. This is also for Bentwood's test world that I use. Basically, when the bellows receive mechanical power for the first time they will contract and when they do so they will excuse me um I've got a bit of a runny nose sorry um there we go that's what the bellows look like when I give them mechanical power as indicated by this switch here they'll contract now I'm going to show you what will happen oh, wait a minute. I'm going to remove the stewing pot now, when I give that, um, 
when the bello bellows compressor will make this fire go higher up like this so now they compress and the fire goes too higher now however if it stays compressed after a while the fire will go back down to how it was before which is very good because if you have it contracted if you give it mechanical power you will only get a um, special fire for five seconds which isn't long enough to use that special fire so to uh, create new items because this um, stoats fire when you use the bellows to make the fire better um, it allows you to create new things in the stewing pot that you wouldn't be able to make before for example glue and um, this stuff here which is tallow um, soap um, and a whole load of other stuff but um, obviously if you want to keep this fire going at that strength, you need to constantly have this going up and down. Because every time it um, contracts, it blows out air to keep the fire going for longer. Um, so if it stays contracted, it, well that's 5 seconds, if it goes down goes back up, um, that won't work either. It needs to go... Um, what you need to have is an alternating mechanical power. Now you could do this with a millstone, just going like um, timing it so that this would go up and down or you could sell more hive self in here which is a um, it took me a very long time to get this to work I tried a, um, a redstone timer at first but um, I couldn't figure out how to do it so in the end I ended up making a turntable from stage 6 which basically spins around these redstone torches create an alternating so good, I'll show you what happened when I turn it on. It spins round, and every few seconds it creates a redstone signal which stops this from working for a few seconds. Which means that this um, expands again. When the redstone signal is off, that receives mechanical power and it goes down again, so that makes it go up and down. Now, we're making this until um, the next episode. So, um, let me just fix that. So, if you know how to make a redstone timer, then go ahead and make one, because I don't know how to. I tried to, but it didn't really work, because the um, redstone signal couldn't be applied for long enough for this to expand. It, just the um, mechanical power kept coming back, and it, it wouldn't go back up again. So, um... You could, if you wanted, just have a gearbox and just have a lever and pull it up and down and that would contract and expand this as much as you need. But later you'll be able to make this automatic using the turntable, which I've already made. And this will now keep this fire stoked and inside the stewing pot we can now make new things. I have eight bones here, but I'm going to put all these in, you need eight, one won't work. Put all eight bones in there, and with this new special fire that I make, the stoked fire, you can't actually see it because it's doing pots where it will be. But, um, this here is glue, and it can be used in all these slime ball recipes, composite bows, water wheels, everything where you need slime balls that you can now just use the glue, and I really could have used that in the last episode, but I had to make a giant slime farm on the ground. Okay, um, let's see what else you can make. Uh, for beef, um, um, what you could do is put any kind of a meat in a, in a heated, in a stoked fire, stewing pot, um, and it will create tallow here. Um, you can use four beef, or you can just use one pork chop. Uh, I don't know how many eggs it is, it's probably six or eight or ten or something, I don't know the specifics, but you can use eggs, you can probably use chicken, anything that's, um, it's basically fat. This is a more processed form of fat and you can do certain things with it. Um, 
For example, put a piece of wood in a heated stewing pot, and you will create another new thing. I think this actually takes slightly longer than the other stewing pot at the house. Um, this is basically now a rendering device. It can render things down to blue or um, this here, which is potash. You can actually um, create other things out of what we've already made. Potash, for example, and a bit of tallow. A bit of tallow. Um, we're putting here together create something um, that isn't really very useful yet, but maybe later on, better wolves all data. So, uh, so many has one use right now. It can be used to convert a sticky piston back into a normal piston. You just put a soap and a sticky piston in there and it will turn back. I don't know if you tried that because I have no sticky pistons. Now, say you have a... Um, oh, by the way, do not put Hellfire Dust in a rendering stewing pot because it will explode. Um, don't put that in a, a standard stewing pot, a standard fire, not the stoked fire here. Um, now, this um, something you can make here. Um, with tallow, which I have six of, some hellfire dust, and this is sawdust. And you put the, the um, raw tree trunk here, the wood, into a sawmill. It creates planks and wood. Uh, wrong one. It, it makes um, sawdust, planks and sawdust. Um, um, well, there's something quite special you can make here. Um, dynamite. Okay, you need paper on the side, hellfire dust, tallow and sawdust. Now dynamite is like a... Um, I'm not really sure how you throw it. I think it can be thrown. When you light it with flint and steel and... It explodes. It's not as powerful as TNT, but combine six together. We make a couple of ropes and some glue. You get mining chargers. With these like dynamite can be used to help you when mining. And I'm going to head down the mine shaft. Actually, the best way down is right here. I still haven't made enough rope for my elevator to go to the bottom of the mine shaft. So, um, I'm taking the stairs instead. By 12. As deep as you can go. And I'm going to uh, demonstrate what the mining charge does. I'm going to place one right here. And light it. It's like TNT. And as you'll see, if that had been TNT, it would have. Um, destroyed a lot of that cobble, but mining chargers don't destroy anything. They keep all the um, they all they keep all the resources that get blown up and also they um, create a perfect shape. Kind of perfect, there's always a hole at the back for some reason. Um, let me just have a quick look at the inventory. I think I have covered everything for stages four and five. So, uh, here we go then. Um, stage four and five, you will need um, to make a hibachium bellows using hellfire dust from the hopper with salt sand filter. And uh, you can use to create a whole load of new items. Um, I have their various uses. Um, I have probably no need for this hole in the ground anymore now that I have. Um, now that I have that. Um, now that I can make glue. I, I can't remember what I was saying then. So, um, in the next episode. I'm going to be looking at pottery. This is stage six. I'll make sure you how to make a turntable, which I already have. But I, I needed it because um, you can attach a redstone torch to it and create an alternating current. 
and um, which helps me with my bellows. I suppose if you um, if you can't wait to find out how to make a turntable, then just head to the forums for better for wolves. And how to make a turntable. If you don't want to do that, then um, I suppose your only option will be either to make an actual redstone timing circuit with repeaters, or to alternate the current yourself using a lever or a hand crank. So, um, I think for now that is everything. Um, I'm going to do pottery, and then I'm going to do the, um, the new age, and then I'll cover any miscellaneous things that aren't really covered in the actual um, agents, such as um, block places block dispensers you just can put blocks down and remove blocks um, and also um, a few little bonuses that creator has added looking around probably the final episode so probably about three more episodes of this mini series left now um, if you found this video helpful and a like would really be appreciated of course, if you, leave, um, if you have any feedback you'd like to give me, just leave it in the comments. Um, I would really use more feedback. Um, and that's all for me. Bye bye.